We all have an endocannabinoid system, but it's not there so that we can consume cannabis. It's there to help our body communicate and thrive. Our body is comprised of 10 different organ systems and they're all interconnected by the endocannabinoid system. Let's talk a little bit about each system and a little bit how the endocannabinoid system is involved. When we look at the respiratory system, the system involved with helping us breathe, we can find the endocannabinoid system is there as well. Within the lungs, the endocannabinoid system regulates something known as bronchodilation or how tight the airways are. It also is intertwined heavily into the immune system which is present in the lungs to prevent any foreign pathogens or foreign particles from getting into the lungs. The endocannabinoid system mediates the inflammation in the lungs as well as its ability to move oxygen. And now on to the cardiovascular system. This system is involved for moving blood throughout the body. Obviously the core of the circulatory system is in the heart, but this also includes all of the vasculature, the veins and arteries that go out throughout the body. And if we were able to zoom in really closely on these veins and arteries, we would find that the endocannabinoid system is there as well. It can actually regulate the vascular tone affecting blood pressure. This is why THC can sometimes cause a decrease in blood pressure. Additionally, THC is commonly known to cause a side effect of tachycardia or rapid heart rate. This can also be explained through the endocannabinoid system as the heart is very abundant in CB1 receptors. Activating them causes it to beat faster. As always, the endocannabinoid system serves a very important role throughout the body, especially the cardiovascular system. Now let's move on to the digestive tract. Anyone who's ever used THC know there's a clear connection between the stomach and your cannabinoid system, right? The munchies are a common side effect of consuming THC, and this relates with the endocannabinoid system's role in the GI tract. THC can affect your hunger, as we know, but it also affects how fast the stomach empties and how fast the small intestines move. If we zoom out and look at the whole digestive tract from the mouth to the stomach, to the small intestines, to the butt, we can find the endocannabinoid system in all of those areas performing different and important roles and consuming cannabinoids can stimulate the endocannabinoid system and have varying effects on the GI tract. Moving on to the endocrine system, which is the large system throughout the body responsible for making all of your hormones. It includes your thyroid, your pituitary, and your adrenal glands. The endocannabinoid system as always, is intertwined with this system and is responsible for influencing sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen, stress hormones like cortisol, and even uh, glucose-related hormones like insulin. Because the complex interactions between the endocannabinoid system and the endocrine system, concerns around heavy cannabis use, testosterone levels, and pregnancy are not totally unwarranted. Unfortunately, these connections remain poorly understood and the difference between individual to individual and cannabinoid to cannabinoid remains to still be discovered. We'll learn more as time goes on about the important role the endocannabinoid system serves in the endocrine system. Moving on to the urinary system, which includes your kidneys, which filter your blood, and your bladder, which holds your urine, Evidence over the last 10 years has found that the endocannabinoid system is present in the kidney, but the influence of cannabis on this system is mostly unknown. We'll continue to learn more about the important role of the ECS in the urinary tract, but for now, not too much to learn regarding cannabinoids. Now let's discuss the reproductive system. This one speaks for itself. This is the system involved in reproduction, having babies, right? So in a female, this means the uterus, the ovaries, and the fallopian tube. And in men, it means the testes. The endocannabinoid system plays a critical role in female reproduction and is involved in implantation of the embryo, movement of the embryo down the fallopian tubes, and maintaining the uterus during pregnancy. Of course, this critical role of the endocannabinoid system is also the reason there's concerns around THC use through pregnancy because it can alter the endocannabinoid system's tone and potentially have an impact on the baby or the mother. Additionally, when we look at male reproduction, we find that sperm themselves have cannabinoid receptors and THC may be able to activate these cannabinoid receptors, slowing the sperm down, which may explain some of the reduced fertilities that have been associated with heavy cannabis use. Moving on to the nervous system, which is the system responsible for communication and coordination of all the body systems. The nervous system includes the brain and the nerves, 
And the sensory system includes the eyes and the ears, helping bring information to the nervous system so it can help us determine how to act. When we zoom in on the brain, we can find that there's a dense endocannabinoid system throughout most of the brain. In fact, the CB1 receptor is the most concentrated receptor in the brain, more than dopamine receptors, more than serotonin receptors or GABA receptors. It's the ECS that maintains our brain health. The ECS is also involved with our vision, hearing, learning, and balance. It's no surprise then that THC's most commonly induced side effects are related to verbalizing our thoughts, short-term memory loss, and problems with balance. THC has a tremendous impact on the nervous system because the endocannabinoid system is so important to this system. Moving on to the integumentary system, which is our hair, skin, and nails designed to protect us from the sun or damaging rays, CB receptors can be found on the skin, but deeper than most topical cannabis products uh, will penetrate. There are also cannabinoid receptors all through the nerves in the skin and within the sweat glands and oil glands. The endocannabinoid system is responsible for all sorts of functions in the skin, but generally speaking, cannabis doesn't have too much effect on them. However, using a CBD topical can help to reduce some of the oil production in the skin, may help with hair growth, and has definite anti-inflammatory effects. The skin and the endocannabinoid system are tied, and there's no doubt that topical cannabinoids have their role in cannabis medicine. Moving on to the musculoskeletal system. This is comprised of the muscles and the bones and helps provide you with the support, stability, and movement you need to live your life. The ECS helps regulate much of this system and is involved heavily in muscle function, helping muscles know whether to use sugar or fat as energy. Because the endocannabinoids serve such a vast role in muscles, it's not a surprise that THC can have some side effects. In rare cases, THC can cause muscle spasms in individuals and that can be problematic or it can just be a little alarming. Generally speaking, it's not harmful. CBD is also helpful in the musculoskeletal system and it can help reduce inflammation that can occur, especially after exercise. Now let's discuss the hematologic and immune systems. Once again, we find the endocannabinoid system all throughout this system, including in bone marrow, in the lymphatic system, in the tonsils and spleens, and more. Looking even further, we can find specifically CB2 receptors all throughout the immune system and in most of our immune cells. For this reason, it's no surprise that so many individuals who suffer from autoimmune conditions actually end up benefiting from the use of cannabinoids. This immunomodulatory effect is so powerful that in one study, CBD was compared to tacrolimus, a powerful pharmaceutical used in transplant rejection, and CBD was found to be just as efficient. In other words, CBD has immunomodulatory effects, THC benefits many individuals with immunocompromised diseases, and there's a lot of utility for cannabis in the hematologic because the endocannabinoid system is widespread and intertwined with all 10 of these body systems, it'll come as little surprise that cannabis can be used as medicine for a wide variety of ailments. In the next lesson, we'll dive specifically in to what those ailments are and how cannabis can be used to treat them.